incoming! In our last tutorial, we left the spy standing, not doing a heck of a lot. Let's introduce a change in circumstance. Imagine standing around, minding your own business, when all of a sudden, your clothes disappear. And to make matters worse, the blue engine busts in laugh. <laughs> Apologies. By creating a change in circumstance, we motivated a change in spy. This is a classic James Bond pose, which is a more suave variation of the gunfighter pose, which is a violent variation of the accusatory finger pointing pose. We are so familiar with this pose on a body language level that none of us would have a hard time acting it out. Just imagine scolding your cat for peeing on the floor. That was unfortunate! Not hard. So what are some of the elements that go into this shooting pose? When examining a pose, it helps to simplify the body language. If we were to draw a single line to represent this pose, it may look like this. S-curves like this one can be found throughout the human form. Posing characters with S-curves will produce strong, graceful body language that reads well. Add a curve for the other leg, and we make kind of an A-shape. Give them some shoulders, a head, some arms, and now we simplify the body into a few lines. Interestingly, in Chinese calligraphy, the character for important man takes a very similar form. Just as in calligraphy, think of posing as a way of writing visually. Dropping in poses is kind of like putting a bunch of words together. And to make sure we're understood, we'll want our poses to read well. Now that we've simplified the body into curves, let's see how our standing pose contrasts with the shooting pose. Watch how these S-curves stretch and expand, always retaining a pleasing shape, never getting too straight or too crooked. And from the back, as the gun is lowered, his weight shifts to his left. Check out how the S-curve bows in the opposite direction. The diagonals of his hips and shoulders switch direction, compressing on one side and expanding on the other. Take note of these major differences as we delve into the second most fundamental step of pose-to-pose -pose animation, blocking. The mechanics of creating a second pose and transitioning is quite simple. In the motion editor, select a new region of time, pose, transition from one pose to the next using the round preset. Getting a good result, however, can be tricky. For this tutorial, we'll invest a little time prepping our scene and learn some techniques to get a good result every time. First, find a dry erase marker, the kind that can be easily rubbed off. We'll need to use one to draw poses on the screen. If the scene isn't already open, launch SFM and load in the file from the first tutorial. More than likely, it'll be listed under Recently Saved Files. The previous file should have a spy with gun already posed. Before continuing, we'll disable the floating modification layer to save us having to press the Enter button every time we move a control. We'll turn it back on later when we use it to smooth out animation. Enter the Motion Editor. Click on the gear icon in the Timeline window. Notice, next to Floating Modification Layer Enabled, there's a check mark next to it. Click on it to disable it. Now let's make two cameras that'll make the job of posing in 3D a lot simpler. Unlike a drawing, our 3D character must look good in all dimensions. The best strategy for doing this is to work with two cameras that are right angles to the character. Say like a side camera and a back camera. And, as the wisdom goes, if we can get the pose right in both these camera views, then we'll have gotten the pose right from all viewpoints. Using the keyboard controls, navigate the camera until we're side on to the character. Ensure all of time is selected. If not, press Ctrl A. Make the current camera animatable by creating a motion set for it. Right click on the plus sign and select Create Animation Set for Existing Element. In the dialog box, select the current camera. You can tell which camera is current by finding its name here on this button in the viewport. 
click OK to create the new animation set. The camera is now animatable and has been listed in the animation set editor. Creating an animation set will allow us to position the camera so that it's perfectly side on to the character. Also, creating animation set will mean that the camera won't move unless it's selected. Select the camera. Notice that several sliders have appeared in this window. Double click on Transform Rote. Input the following into each box. 0, 0, minus 90. Now the camera is aligned to the y-axis of the scene and exactly side onto the character. To frame the character whilst keeping the camera aligned, open up Camera, All, Transform, and select Pause. Moving the camera while pause is selected will keep the camera perfectly side on. Currently, the camera has lots of perspective depth to it. The spy's left leg appears smaller than the right because it's further away. Let's reduce the depth of the camera so that his body parts appear to be the same size. Do this by selecting the Field of View slider in the Animation Set Editor. Drag the Field of View slider to the left. The camera zooms in. To reframe the spy, click on Pause, as before, and use the camera controls to reframe the character. Now the image has less depth and appears more two-dimensional. Now that we've gone through the trouble of making a side camera, may as well set up the back camera as well. Click on the viewport to ensure the mouse focus is on it. Press the C key to create a new camera. Though nothing seems to have happened, a new camera has been created. Note the new camera name in this viewport button. Let's move the camera behind the spy by orbiting around his pelvis. Select the pelvis by holding down the control key and left click selecting it in the viewport. Now hold down Alt and left click drag in the viewport. Orbit the camera around so that we're directly behind the spy. Create an animation set of the new camera. Click on the plus sign and select Create Animation Set from Existing Element. Find the name of the new camera and select it. Click OK to create the new animation set. Select the new camera in the Animation Set window. Double click on Transform Rote. Enter these values 0, 0, 180. Now the back camera is aligned to the scene's x axis. This back camera is perfectly at right angles to the side camera. To frame the camera without getting it off angle, open up Camera, All, Transform, and select Pause. Now when the camera is navigated, it stays perpendicular to the character. Switch between cameras by selecting it in the Animation Set Editor and left-click dragging into the viewport. Return the viewport to the side camera. Now that we've set up our two cameras, let's define the region of time we'll be applying animation changes to. For now, let's say the spy stands between 0 and 1 second, then we'll have him in a shooting pose between 1 and 3 seconds. If the playhead is not currently at 0, press the up arrow to return the playhead to the beginning of the clip. Press M to set a bookmark. To see the numbers better, zoom into the timeline by scrolling up on the mouse scroll wheel. To set a bookmark at the 1 second interval, left click drag the playhead to 1. Press M to bookmark it. Set another bookmark at the 3 second interval. Press M. Now that we've defined the regions of time, shift between these regions using the left and right bracket keys. Remember these keys as we'll be using them a lot later. Now let's select the time range for the shooting pose from 1 to 3 seconds. Just to help things along a little, we'll do a couple of tricks that'll keep the character from getting tangled up as we pose him. First, let's lock the head rotation so that it's not affected by the body movement. Under Spy, Rig Body, Rig Head, select the checkbox next to Rote. A lock icon will appear. Now when the pelvis is moved, the head stays looking in the same direction. Now let's lock the hands to the pelvis. Open up Rig Arms, Right Arms, and Left Arms. Then under Rig Body, find Rig Pelvis. 
left-click drag rig pelvis onto the checkbox next to rig hand R so that the lock icon appears. Next, left-click drag rig pelvis onto rig hand L so that a lock icon appears next to it. Now when the pelvis is moved, the hands keep up. Finally, we can move on to the fun part, creating the second pose. Remember how your mom got mad at you for drawing on the TV screen when you were a kid? Now you can relive that moment as you use a dry erase marker to draw the shooting pose right on the screen. A drawing is a really helpful way to pin down what we're going for. Now might be a good time to double check that you're actually using a dry erase marker and not a Sharpie. It's kind of like this. Here's the main curve. The leg kind of goes like this. The shoulders come down diagonally. And the arms kind of like this. One thrust forward and the other back a little. And the head like this. Now let's move the character so that he fits the drawing. We'll concentrate on getting the main trunk of the body feeling good, then focus on the arms and other details. Let's start with the pelvis. Moving the pelvis will get us 90% of the way towards describing this main S-curve. Select the Translate icon. Use a square in the middle to translate the pelvis along the camera plane. Translating and rotating along the camera plane is a way of only having to work in two dimensions at a time. Now rotate the pelvis so that it's aligned to the drawing. Click on the Rotate icon. Use the blue outer ring to rotate the pelvis relative to the camera plane. Again, this will help us by only having to worry about two dimensions. Continue working up the spine, neck and head in this fashion until the upper body rests on the curve. Ensure that the controls are aligned smoothly and not buckled. Use the left and right bracket keys to move between the first and second poses. This technique of going back and forth between poses is called flipping. Flipping helps us see the relationship between poses and gives us an idea of what's working and what needs to be adjusted. Flip back and forth, making adjustments until it feels approximately right. Next, we'll add the twist to the pelvis and upper torso. Twist the back by rotating the pelvis and spine perpendicular to the camera plane. Rotating perpendicular to the camera plane, again, is just a way to help confine our changes to just two dimensions. Select the pelvis. Shift-click the rotation icon. The rotation axis will now align itself to the scene axis. Left-click dragging the blue axis will now rotate the pelvis perpendicular to the camera. Rotate the pelvis to the right so that the right thigh aligns with the left thigh. Continue to work up the spine, rotating each control just slightly so that the twist happens evenly across all spine controls. Rotate the spine just enough so that the shoulders are aligned properly. Move the arms in place by translating them along the camera plane to the appropriate spot on the drawing. Remember, you can use the W and E hotkeys to switch back and forth between rotate and translate manipulators. Now use the bracket keys to flip between these poses. The right shoulder goes from behind the spy to his front, the right arm goes folded to stretched out in front of him, and the left arm swings back to counterbalance the right. Continue making adjustments to the S-curve, the twist, and the arms until they feel about right. Now it's time to take a look at the pose from the back. Drag the back camera into the viewport. Looks a little wonky. Up to now, we've only concentrated making the pose look good from the side. Now let's make it look good from this angle. Make a drawing of the back view. Erase the old drawing and create a new one. The weight is now more over the left foot, making the curve bow out. And the shoulders tip down in opposition to the pelvis. The left arm is stretched out and the right bends like this. Now we'll align the body to the drawing same as before. Double check that the time selection is set between 1 and 3 seconds. Starting with the pelvis, translate and rotate along the camera plane so that it falls on the curve. 
weaving controls along the camera plane in the back view should leave the side view mostly intact. Using the blue outer ring, work your way up the spine, neck, and head, shaping the torso along the main S-curve. Move the hands, feet, and knees along the camera plane so that they line up to the drawing. Select the controls from the Animation Set Editor if they are too difficult to select from the viewport. Flip back and forth again. The main S-curve will bow in opposite directions, dropping the left and right sides of the shoulders alternately. Once we're satisfied that the pose looks good in this view, we'll orbit around the character to make sure the pose looks good in 3D. Control left click the viewport button to create a work camera. The work camera is a temporary camera you can use to navigate around the scene. Select the hips and orbit around the character. As you orbit, Clean up any remaining weirdness. Fix his coattails by selecting rig hips and rotating it slightly away from his legs. Now we'll take a look at the front. Adjust the gun and smooth out any kinks in his torso. As we're moving around the character, flip between the poses so that the two poses work well together from all angles. The character should look well balanced with graceful S-curves from any viewpoint. To finish off, let's create some simple transitions so that the spy moves more gradually from first to second pose. We'll use the round preset to create this transition. At the moment, if we tried playing the animation, the poses will pop from one to the other. Before creating the transition, let's turn on floating modification layer. Ensure that you're in the motion editor, click on the gear icon in the timeline window, and select enable floating modification layer. Now we'll make a time selection that spans the pop. Zoom into the timeline with middle mouse scroll wheel to see the time in decimals. Hover the mouse cursor over the 0.8 second mark. Hold down shift and left click drag over the pop. Notice that while the left mouse button is still pressed, moving the mouse will expand and contract this time selection. Drag the end of the time selection to the 1.2 second mark and release the mouse button. Next, let's modify the time selection by adding a fall off region to it. A falloff region helps tell the round preset to apply the changes gradually. Hold down shift and middle mouse scroll wheel up. Make the falloff region stretch from about the 0.6 second mark on the left side to the 1.4 second mark on the right side. Select all of Spy in the Animation Set Editor. In the Procedural tab, find the round preset. Drag the slider all the way to the right. Notice that the vertical line has now changed into a smooth curve. The round preset has created a gradual change from one pose to the next. As long as the time selection is orange, this change is stored in the floating modification layer. The floating modification layer stores animation changes in a temporary buffer. We can preview changes without having to commit to them. Keeping the time selection orange, review the animation by pressing Ctrl and Spacebar. Control spacebar will set the playhead at the beginning of the clip and play the animation automatically. Press spacebar again to return the playhead to where it was last. The amount of smoothing and the timing of transitions can be adjusted by left click dragging the edges of the time selection. Greater falloff equates to a smoother transition. No falloff equates to a sharp transition. Moving the time selection edges closer together 
will create a faster transition. Press Enter to save these changes. Create a transition for the other pop. If necessary, reframe the motion editor by left-click dragging on the bottom part of the playhead. Review these changes by left-clicking on the timeline just before the time selection, and press the spacebar. Press the spacebar again to stop the playback. Now let's adjust the timing. Mark off these regions of transitions by placing a marker where they start and end. Drag the playhead to the beginning of the transition. Press M to create a bookmark. Drag the playhead to the end of the transition. Bookmark by pressing M. Remove the middle bookmark by right-clicking on it and selecting Delete Bookmark. Do the same for the second transition. Now the animation has been divided into regions of transitions and regions of held poses. To adjust timing, we'll expand and contract these regions. First, remove the falloff region in the time selection by mouse scroll wheeling down. Now left-right bracket key to the region of time to be changed. Holding down Alt, left-click drag the edges of the time selection. Notice how the curves in the motion editor and the bookmarks move with it. Making the time selection smaller will make it go by quicker. Making the region longer will mean that more time will be spent over that part of the animation. Congratulations! Now we've created two poses that combined tell a story and physically work well together. This stage of an animation is called blocking. Animators will often keep the animation at the simple level until story and timing changes have been worked out. To sum up what we've learned, we've analyzed the pose, drew it, fit the character to the drawing, worked from two viewpoints, made a simple transition between poses, and adjusted the timing. The next stage is to delve into some fancier ways of going in and out of poses. We'll talk about three intermediary poses that will help add more life to the performance. And to help us with this, We'll learn a few ins and outs of the graph editor. Save the file as we'll be using this in future tutorials.